Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today, we're going to be talking about the top Dark Horse decks coming into the January format. Now, what is exactly a Dark Horse deck, you might ask? Well, a Dark Horse deck is a deck that we don't expect to win, but comes out triumphant in the end anyways. Now, with that being said, let's actually dissect the meta. There's really only two good decks this format so far until Secrets of Eternity drops. We can't necessarily assume that cards in Secrets of Eternity will make an immediate impact to the meta because we're not yet there. We can always guess such as cards like Necros or even the new Elemental Hero Structure deck will make a huge impact to the meta. But for right now, we're going to worry about the cards right now. The two top decks will be Burning Abyss and Clifford. Being able to dominate the meta with destroying cards on your opponent's side of the field through Fire Lake and Dante and being able to control the board through Virgil and also just dropping a huge amounts of big strong monsters off a of tribute summoning and then being able to just do whatever you want to your opponent with Clifford have been the two dominant strategies. Now, where does that leave Shadows, one might ask? Well, as a Dark Horse deck. Granted, Shadows have, since November, uh, topped 20 spots of the 80 spots available in every YCS and ARG event in between those two, but 25% doesn't really want to cut it as a tier 1 deck. Granted, that is, I mean, you know, close to 30%, you know, and there's three decks, so one would be like, duh, Kelly effect, that's half, Shadows one half, but when you look at it, Shadows are all at the lower tier ranking at the bottom 16 or even the bottom 32 in the YCS's case. That being said, you really can't consider Shadows to be a tier 1 deck when they haven't necessarily staked their claim and topped multiple events at high numbers and at the higher seeding spots. Shadows are a great Dark Horse deck and they do have a very good edge over the other two decks for a couple of reasons. While they might not get direct support except for the the wind fusion monster that nobody wants to play and the equipped spell card which is not that bad but not exactly what we wanted for shot all players we do get support through other cards now shot alls like i said have a huge advantage because you can mix and match shot alls with any other cards to make them good for example when shot alls first came out it was the artifact engine then it became chaos shot alls now we're playing deca seca chaos deca denka seca uh, artifacts but with the new hero structure that coming out they can abuse just about all of the good heroes and on top of that they can summon dark law a really crippling strategy to our already burning abyss matchup that we have an advantage of that being said shadow really have an edge you know with blaze man coming out being able to actually special summon some of our shadow fusion monsters that you know are kind of good and also being able to special summon the elemental hero fusion monsters that are really good as well will give shadows an indefinite in edge over the meta hopefully they'll be able to secure a spot back into their tier one status but until then they're definitely considered a rogue deck the only great side about shadows is that they have an infinitely great matchup against burning abyss it's so easy just to drop a shot off fusion on a face up Dante and just go off on your opponent. They also have an extraordinary matchup against a lot of rogue decks. They're extremely, they're becoming extremely hard to side against. I mean, for the exception of non fusion area, which is very easy to counter with shot all dragons since you can dump them to the graveyard almost every single time. The deck is just really good and can build momentum off of any type of plays. Next on the list is Mermel. Now, Mermel is a very interesting deck because the deck just doesn't die. I mean, who, who would expect this deck to be this good after this long of a time? Now, with Konomi bringing Mermel up this gun to three, one might ask, what really gives Mermel that edge over the opponent? Because while gun is at three, we still don't have all Mermel back at full power and it still doesn't look like enough. Well, beside being Gaia's Dweller as your win condition, this deck is still extremely consistent, it's, it's extremely fast, and now it can OTK even 10 times harder than before. For example, against the Clifford matchup, you wouldn't necessarily want to set up the Gaia's Dweller, but you can definitely drop a huge amount of Mermo monsters on your side of the board and still destroy their Pendulum monsters through the effect of infantry and marksmen to destroy their back row, and then just swing for a crap ton of damage 
hopefully crippling them enough so they can't activate Scout, which in turn hands you the game. The deck is really good at making rank 7s and rank 4s. It's very fast paced and if piloted by the right player because it is a skilled deck, it can definitely take a couple of names in some higher level events. The only problem with the Mermel deck is that it requires a lot of skill and that's something that might turn off a lot of players. Um, it does need to utilize back row unlike its predecessors and you're still gonna have to you're still going up against an uphill battle against certain decks such as Clifford and Burning Abyss and the way that their play style and back row. The last deck is the ultimate dark horse of any given format and I'm gonna go with UA also known as Ultra Athletes yeah, I, I think they're called Ultra Athletes. I mean, who wouldn't love them? Now, Ultra Athletes have a very different combination of cards that will definitely pique a good player's interest. But what really gets our attention is that they have really good effects, period. I mean, through the effects of Slugger and Perfect Ace, Slugger, when it, just, when it attacks, your opponent can't activate cards. So, I mean, Dante's effect doesn't go through. Sears' effect doesn't go through. Graf's effect doesn't go through. Sac like it's a lot of cards when you make him strong enough they won't go through once he starts attacking over monsters it's not hard to make him strong all you have to do is have u of a stadium on the field which in turn searches him so that's just another story perfect ace also at discarding a card allows us to negate the activation of opponent's card and destroy it so the deck is really good it's extremely searchable it allows us to stop the opponent's monster effects and the decks hasn't even just started it's still getting more support through the later sets there's a couple of other ua cards that are extremely interesting that are coming out as of right now in secrets of fraternity and i would love to talk to you about them such as ua linebacker and ua playmaker they're not really bad cards they're actually pretty good and i don't think that it's over for that deck just because it hasn't received all of its support even with the support that we do have the deck can still make a lot of plays and that's what ultimately could put it as a really good dark horse contender for this format not to mention that it can abuse cards some of the strongest engines in the game the monarch storm Fourth and the tour card engine to its ability to just spam out plays and put your opponent in a lot of positions they don't want to be in also their abilities to make unorthodox plays outside of the box well thank you for watching another segment of the cali effect please like comment subscribe but most of all enjoy